Thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure to be here this morning. Um, I'm delighted to join you for breakfast uh, before we all go to work. <laughs> Um, now, we're gathered to launch the publication The Art of Ethical Leadership by Tom O'Higgins, Simon Webley, and Aidan Lamb. And the publication is the result of a joint endeavour between Price to Ireland and the Chartered Accountants Ireland. The contributors, uh, Tom O'Higgins, Simon Webley, and Aidan Lamb, have brought a great wealth of experience to their task. And they provide us with a most illuminating account of leadership and the centrality of ethics uh, to corporate governments. Um, if we look at uh, an outline of their practical and academic experience, we can see where they have drawn their um, approach from. Aidan Lamb is director of the Technical Policy at Chartered Accountants Ireland. He's an alternate member of the company Law Review Group and has previously acted as a technical advisor to the Department of Jobs enterprise and innovation on a variety of European Commission committees. He's a member of the Financial Reporting Council, Irish Audit Consultative Committee, and he also attends the Financial Reporting Council's Audit and Assurance Council as Irish Observer. And he's been involved in a variety of institute technical policy initiatives, including the Future of Audit Group. Simon Webley has been Research Director at the Institute of Business Ethics in London since 1998. This organization is dedicated to encouraging high standards of business behavior based on ethical values. He's got an MA in Economics and Political Science from Trinity, and he's published a large number of studies on business ethics. Now, I really don't have to say much about Tom O'Higgins. We know him well, but it's, a, it's appropriate to recite his great achievements. He's founder of Price to Ireland and was previously a partner in PwC. He's past president and fellow of Chartered Accountants Ireland, a specialist and lecturer in corporate governance and chaired the audit committees of so many state bodies and government departments. Currently chairman of the audit committees of the HSC and the Commission for Energy Regulation and a member of a number of other uh, committees. And he's co-author of Price to's publication, The Art of Chairing a Board. He's, of course, also been very deeply involved in charitable organizations, was a director and chairman of Concern Worldwide and its subsidiaries in the UK, USA, and Cambodia. He was chairman of AMK Cambodia, which is the leading uh, microfinance institution in that country between 2003 and 2010. And also, he is a former chairman of the Coombe Hospital. He was a member of the Irish Human Rights Commission until 2011 and a trustee of the Holocaust Educational Trust of Ireland. He has, of course, a degree in economics and history from UCD, an MSc in strategic human resources from Sheffield Hallam Business School and a master coach accreditation from Mid Middlesex University. He's an associate of the Irish Taxation Institute and a member of the Institute of Chartered Personnel and Development. Now, all of that laid a foundation, but it really is Tom's personality and drive and energy that has brought us all here uh, today. Unfortunately, Tom and uh, Mr. Webley are unable to be with us. And I would just like to say, as chairperson of the court service and our CEO, Brendan Ryan, is also here, um, that we have such a high personal regard for Tom because he was a great help to us uh, when we were establishing the court service, and he has he was auditor of our uh, committee audit committee until last October. Um, when we were establishing the court service in 1990, which is a new corporate body which governs all manages all the courts in the state, um, we had great assistance from Tom as we looked at the concept of corporate governance overall in the institution as we were intending to establish uh, a modern company with good governance. And Tom was a great help in that as we planned it. And then he was, as I say, specifically a great help um, on our audit committees and helped us and gave us comfort on our board as he assisted us through uh, the governance of the, um, <coughs> the court service. And I speak to you as chairperson of the court service uh, and therefore with the whole concept of the difficulty of dealing with corporations at this time. Um, we, as in the rest of the public service, are suffering um, from the austerity. Our budget uh, for 2013 is 24 
percent less than it was in 2008. Um, our capital allocation is 79% down. Our staff is 20% down. Our non-pay funding is down 39%. And our workload in that time has gone up 20%. So I have a day-to-day -day realization of the difficulties of dealing uh, as a corporation uh, in these times of austerity with the fiscal issues and then also with the ethical issues that we have with our staff who are uh, absolutely wonderful and who are coping with this huge cutback. Uh, and yet every day you will see our courts are open in spite of all these dis dis difficulties. So it's a very challenging time and therefore we're very grateful to Tom who assisted us when we set up the court service with this very fundamental concept of good governance which we have been pursuing with our staff, who are uh, absolutely excellent. In fact, when uh, Michael McDowell was uh, Minister for Justice, he said they are the jewel in the public service, and of course, I think that is absolutely true. Ethics, so ethics can be something of an elusive concept. It's connected to the individual, and indeed the word ethics comes from the Greek word ethos, which means character. Our helpful definition um, uh, that I was looking up comes from a, a, a chief a justice of the Supreme Court in the USA who said, ethics is knowing the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do. And knowing what is the right thing to do in a situation and then doing it comes from exercising self-awareness, personal integrity, and of course, no small courage. Uh, they are noble characteristics and traits that we should all aspire to, and um, we see that they are connected uh, between, great connection between ethics and human character. Um, often it's very hard to do the right things. I think if you're sitting in a group around um, and perhaps a, a rather dominant person is saying this is the right thing to do, it can be quite hard to say, well, actually I'm not sure about that. So you have to have a sense of what is the right thing to do um, and you want to do the right thing, but then it's hard sometimes to have that little leap of courage to say, actually, CEO or manager or whoever it is, um, I wonder is that right? Uh, Tom notes uh, ethics is about behavior and in the face of a dilemma, doing the right thing. Business and commerce are human enterprises which are intimately linked to human nature and character traits. Personal codes of honor which embody respect and transparency are not 19th century concepts. They are displayed by people in all walks of life today. However, in certain aspects of the fiscal and commercial world in recent times, it's fair to say that such values were sidelined. This has led to disastrous consequence for our economies, our states, and our citizens, and uh, consequences which will be with us for some time to come. This is a challenging time for Ireland. Uh, for the next six months, uh, we are uh, carrying the presidency of the Council of Europe. It's, our focus is on stability, jobs, and growth, and we're using it as an opportunity at, a home, at home and abroad to pr propose the, the recovery of, of Ireland to inform people that, that we are on the return. And um, all of us who are involved in government, small g, in all the various areas, are traveling internationally and telling the world that Ireland is recovering, we're open for business, and um, telling the tale, and getting a very good response. I think, really, it's beginning to turn around now. So the business community has an absolutely critical role to play in the restoration of the economy in leading us out of this recession. Boards of directors hold a privileged position of trust and are relied upon primarily by the company and shareholders, but also by employees, customers, suppliers, and the public at large. And we rely on board of directors to do the right thing. Lax corporate governance and low ethical standards in boardrooms has a trickle-down effect in companies. It seeps into the various levels of the organizations and can lead to risky and sharp practices. The financial crisis has uncovered this, and it's important now that we have a greater emphasis on business ethics. Banking failures and commercial scandals have, in the words of this publication, exposed a dangerous mix of hubristic executives, weak or negligent board oversight, 
poor governance, inadequate regulatory oversight, greed, and the absence of moral leadership. Failure to consider the consequences and impact of reckless behavior on others and not doing the right thing has led to the destruction of businesses and livelihoods. And that trail of devastation comes into our court every day. You know, we don't talk about the cases we hear and the way we decide them. But every day in Ireland, the 140 judges um, around the country have people coming in, businesses have failed because somebody couldn't pay. Uh, businesses have failed because of contracts uh, being withdrawn. Homes are being lost, jobs are being lost, and families are disintegrating because of the stress. And it, it is a really um, a very sad tale in Ireland at the moment to see this incredible consequence of the bust in our courts every day. So this publication is very timely. The publication is divided into three parts. The first, uh, which is a survey of leading Irish, UK and international business exec executives on their ethical approaches, as well as on their organisation's ethical codes and attitudes. And this section is the result of Aidan Lamb's great work. The respondents in the survey were very diverse, which is excellent. They come from manufacturing, retail, construction, information technology, healthcare, and 30% other. So this mix of respondents broadens the research methodology. And the survey results record a number of very positive statistics. Almost 70% of the organizations had a code of business ethics. 70% of those organizations had a code for five years or more. Almost 60% of respondents had a senior person who monitors the effectiveness of the ethics. And in more than 50% of organizations, the CEO's office or risk department is responsible for the ethics program. And nearly two thirds of respondents included a reference to their code in their contracts of employment. So this publication notes that these results indicate that in Ireland and elsewhere, there is a growing acknowledgement by corporate execu executives that a robust policy of good business behavior based on non-negotiable core values is essential for the, response, the sustainability of any business. In the second section, Tom O'Higgins provides us with a learned account of the recent literature on business ethics and ethical leadership, and he illustrates the complexity of uh, affecting ethical decisions with great mastery in simple terms. Tom uh, discusses research by Francesca G uh, Gio, uh, Gino of the Harvard Business School who outlines three findings which show some effective practices that every manager could implement when discussing values. I thought it was a very interesting thing for ourselves as we approach these decisions and think about it. Uh, the first is setting the right example, and that, of course, is a core concept. We all know the best thing to do is set a good example and um, bring it down through the organization. The second is finding uh, about framing ethics to highlight prevention. So carefully crafted uh, policies, codes of ethics, are likely to in influence the ethical conduct. And thirdly, finding stresses uh, the the third finding stresses the importance of means. Managers will naturally want good end results, uh, but maybe not uh, pay attention to the means. And that, of course, is one of the reasons why the bust has come about, because the ends justify the means. So it's very important uh, to include an assessment of the means as well uh, as, as, as the end product. Uh, and there are important lessons for the those in positions of leadership uh, when studying this aspect. The Institute of Business Ethics provides us a useful test to business leaders for ethical decision making. When faced with a decision, uh, it poses the following questions for us to put to ourselves. Am I happy to make my decision public, especially to the people affected by it? Have I fully considered the harmful effects of my decision and how to, the, how to avoid them? And would my decision be considered fair by everyone affected by it? Those three simple questions, uh, which I think is a very good idea for those of us who are contemplating such decisions, uh, as they illustrate an issue of transparency, uh, addressing the effects of the decision, and fairness. 
And of course, if you answer yes to each question, then it's likely to be an ethical decision. Tom writes that there is no quick fix for an ethical void, but there are five fundamental ethical principles that are the foundation of proper conduct in every area of personal and business life and behavior. These are do no harm, make things better, respect others, be fair, be compassionate. You can just hear Tom in that. And it's just so true. They are sound core values. And Tom brings his experience to bear when he makes the observation that many of the most dramatic recent leadership disasters have common ingredients, such as executives who lacked integrity and built organizational cultures where dissent is not heard. The financial meltdown, which started with the risky financial uh, deals we all know about, and ended with millions of everyday people losing jobs or homes, was an example where there was plenty of people who knew that they, but they were either afraid to say something, or if they said something, they were not heard. In the third section, Simon Webley writes that a corporate culture of integrity plays a vital role in developing and sustaining a company's reputation. And he even gives us the assurance that doing the right thing will ultimately help the bottom line, which is a good thing. <laughs> he discusses in detail how leadership is portrayed by the setting of an example, and again says that leadership serves as a guide. Uh, a, constant a leader is a constant guide and a reminder to colleagues as how to advance the corporation. He points out that in order for directors to be able to influence the ethical culture, they need not only to understand the ethical issues that their staffs are addressed with, but to lead by example. In the fourth and final section of the publication, a practical aid memoir for leaders to consider is provided, and it sets out 10 ethical issues that business leaders might review and consider. And yeah, clearly, again, this is something that we can refer to and we can use as a guide and I think would be a very helpful uh, document to have for those who are addressing difficult questions and who are perhaps meeting with opposition to an approach, to have this document to show the appropriate approach uh, to an ethical uh, solution. This publication should be read by all in positions of leadership or moving towards such positions. It's written clearly and persuasively and sets out a roadmap for ethical leadership. It advises that people at the top of the organization should personify the values of the organization. These values should include integrity, courage to do the right thing, respect for others, fairness and compassion. So in conclusion, Ethics, like justice, should withstand external influences. Uh, and the novelist D.H. Lawrence wrote that ethics and equity and the principles of justice do not change with the calendar. And the truth is they are dependent on persons and their individual integrity and their courage. The harsh lessons learnt by us all, including the business sector in recent years, are testament to this essential truth. So this publication is a most impressive work and will stand as a constant reminder of the importance of ethics in Irish business and leadership. I congratulate all of those who were involved in this project, Price to Chartered Accountants Ireland, the respondents to the survey, the contributors Tom O'Higgins, Simon Webley and Aidan Lamb, and it's my great pleasure to officially launch The Art of Ethical Leadership. Thank you very much indeed.